What's up, everybody, and welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be watching three um, creepy true lockdown stories. And I love scary things, so uh, let's get started because I want this. It took a lot of time, but I finally found three stories that take place during school mm -hmm. lockdowns. Mm -hmm. It was a typical boring day in calculus, only it was Friday, 7th period, meaning the week was almost over and spring break would finally be upon us, so everybody was getting antsy in their seats, I could tell. We didn't have a test that day like a lot of my friends did with their other teachers, so our teacher in the middle of class just decided to start playing games with us on Sporkle.com. He was a very laid-back teacher, like teacher like that. that could be awesome. As we were doing some brand logo quiz on Sporkle, I remember the exact moment it happened. Right after my friend answered a question, I remember the exact answer too, Adidas. The Dean's voice came through the loudspeaker. He sounded panicked and frantic as he told all the teachers this was not a drill and to go into lockdown. Okay, like, if that happened to me, I would probably be like in my mind screaming my head off because that would freak me out. Um, I actually got the chills, and I got goosebumps on my arms, as our usually laid-back teacher, too, seemed panicked, as he ran to turn off the lights and ushered us to the back corner of the room. We all sat in silence for about two minutes, and then the usual buzzing that came from a panel in the back of the room ceased, indicating that the school must have cut all the power. We all looked at each other, realizing this must be serious. A few more minutes of waiting later, we heard a man screaming at the top of his lungs coming down the hallway. Two girls in the class actually started crying, which made all of us even more scared. As the screaming got closer to the classroom, the lunatic-sounding man started banging on the lockers while screaming, I'll kill all of you. It was at that moment that I started to fear for my life. My teacher shushed us as we all looked at each other to see our peers' reactions. The banging then moved from the lockers to our classroom door. And that's when one of the crying girls screamed no. The bank okay. Well. I would probably yell no too because I would be really freaked out. Being on the door only grew worse as the man started screaming open up. Two of the girls in the class were crying out loud now. It felt like an eternity that that man was pounding at the door. But eventually, he finally continued down the hallway, screaming like a mentally insane person, until we could not hear him anymore. I'd say ten minutes later, though it felt like half an hour given the situation, the dean came back on the loudspeaker explaining the situation, which was surprising for him to do. He explained that some apparently mentally unstable person entered the building and assaulted the woman sitting at the front desk, causing her to flee the building screaming, and staff wasn't sure if the man was armed or not. Now this was before the school had cameras or could afford proper security, so the school was wide open to something like this happening. The staff had done a sweep of all the hallways and classrooms and couldn't find him, so the dean instructed the teachers to resume teaching, but to keep all the doors locked and to not let any students leave for any reasons. The most disturbing part, however, is that one of the janitors working the night shift found the man sleeping in one of the storage closets near the back end of the school, and according to rumors that were spread by my peers, sticking out of his pocket was a 44 Magnum. The janitor must have done something stupid to wake him up, for example, leaving the closet door open, because by the time a police officer could arrive on the scene, Man was gone. My entire class, as far as I know, to this day, has no idea if this man was ever found, but I like to think that right now, he's being given the proper help that he needs. My school has two lunch periods. The first lunch period is for all 6th graders and some 7th graders. The second lunch period is for the other half of the 7th graders and all 8th graders. The lockdown happened in the beginning of October. The day the lockdown occurred, it was overcast and rainy. 
During the first lunch period, I heard four loud booms. I personally thought it was thunder, but the entire lunch crowd started screaming. I was thinking those kids were just serious pussies, but the campus security came in and started yelling at people to go into the multi-purpose room, and the kids who were in line buying lunch had to throw out their lunch and come inside. Me and some friends went inside the room, along with a huge group of other kids. Everyone was curious as to what was happening. Our multi-purpose room is huge, and the back wall of the room is made of see-through glass. When me and my friends were rushed inside the campus, security was covering the glass with the curtains, and there were adults at every exit. My friend Eric was curious, as well as the rest of us, so he asked one of the adults what was going on. Yeah, of course, he back, he so said, cute. You know how right in front of TMS there's those houses? I replied, yeah. There's this mentally disabled crazy man that barricaded himself in front of his house, and he's threatening to commit suicide and kill the cops if he's evicted. He was walking around outside of school watching kids in a weird way, Eric told us. It turned out the man was also a registered sex offender, making matters worse. We were stuck in the multi-purpose room for a whole hour, taking up two periods. After the whole thing was settled, we were escorted to our classrooms one by one. I later found out that the man lives next to my friend Brandy, who told me about the previous Halloween when she saw the same man at his window cutting his arm and writing in his own blood, don't come here or I'll kill you on his window. Of course, being Halloween, people, including Brandy, assumed it was just for the holiday. But after this horrific incident, we knew this man was mental, and we're glad he never got near us. Like at every single walk, I'm 22 years old, fresh out of college, and I recently got a job in high school. The basement of the school is very messy and disorganized, but there is a small three person office that's actually very nice down there. It has three nice big desks, two mini fridges, a flat screen TV mounted on the wall, and oh, so satisfying. Can I go to that college? I want to go there. Awesome. Buying air conditioning, a luxury the students and teachers cannot enjoy in the school. And of course, all the school servers and other computer stuff. I got the job because three of my old computer teachers flat out adored me. I could actually consider them as real friends, mm -hmm. not just teacher figures. So they all helped tremendously in to do this job. It's been great, until something that happened a few weeks ago. My two co-workers that shared the office with me, Dave and Gary, weren't in the office at the time. They were upstairs working on papers or whatever. I was eating my sandwich during my lunch break when I got a phone call from one of the women in the front office telling me the school was on lockdown and that somebody possibly armed had entered the school. There wasn't much that I could do other than turn off the lights because, surprisingly, as nice as this little office was, it didn't have an actual door to it, just a really? big opening, and the door to the whole basement didn't even have a working lock. For my own safety, I did turn off all the lights in the office and my computer screen. phone on the desk, texting both Gary and Dave, but they wouldn't respond. I sat down there in the dark, playing games on my phone for like 20 minutes. Guys, just one minute. My friend sent me a text message. <laughs> what are you doing? Get out!
off the top of that. I had no idea what was happening. I couldn't hear what was going on upstairs from down here. But I was not allowed to make any calls until I was informed that the lockdown was over. Then the noisy basement door opened. As the creaking echoed across the basement and into my office, I sat up from my seat, wondering if I should call out Gary or Dave. I was eager to get some info from them. Someone then came running down the stairs, and their footsteps were approaching my office. I pushed away my chair and crawled under my desk. Somebody entered the office, but did not turn on the lights. There was just silence. I can't even describe the fear I was experiencing. I felt like if I made one sudden noise, I'd be a dead man. Suddenly, my phone dinged as I got a text message. I felt my entire world shrivel up and die at that one moment as I clenched my teeth in fear. Footsteps suddenly moved closer to me until I finally dove out from under the desk in capitulation, begging whoever it was not to kill me. But just then, someone grabbed my arm and pulled me up. It was some guy in a red plaid button-up jeans and a reddish-black cap. He told me, it's okay, I'm just down here hiding with you. What's going on up there? I whispered to him. He kind of ignored my question and asked me if there's an exit down here. I told him, yeah, around that way. Before he could do anything else, I asked him, who are you? There was a brief moment of silence. Before he started explaining, he was coming in to pick up his son when a teacher told him to hide. After his explanation, I checked my phone and saw the text I received was from Dave. It said, Dude, this is fucking crazy. Some guy with a gun shot Mr. Buckley. He's wearing a red shirt and a hat. Whatever you do, don't come upstairs. I was about to reread that text out loud to the man until I realized. I looked up and felt my stomach sink. Mm. The man seemed to catch on to my suspicious stare. Panicking, all I could think to do was to run for the upstairs. A gunshot echoed through the basement, and I could hear the bullet ricochet off something metal in the darkness. But thank God the bullet missed me, and I made it upstairs. Fortunately, police were waiting at all exits, including the basement exit, and caught the man the second he opened the door. More good news, our teacher, Mr. Buckley, survived the gunshot. It was later determined that the man and Mr. Buckley had some beef for whatever reason, but that was never revealed. All we know is that Mr. Buckley couldn't have done anything that would have warranted this kind of reaction. And I know that the sound of that gunshot will forever echo in my mind. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to, just, to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can always be reminded whenever I am making new videos so yeah bye love you guys